The eight worst habits for your kidneys that can seriously damage and impair their function. Is coffee really harmful? What about eating garlic? Can you consume garlic safely? If so, how much? Is sparkling water bad for your kidneys? Are there any fruits that can actually be harmful? I'll tell you now, there are. So stick around till the end of this video to learn all about it. What's the role of our kidneys? Why are they so crucial? Kidneys regulate water and salt levels, vital for maintaining our blood pressure. So kidneys control pressure, which is essential for our survival. They filter toxins and remove certain medications from our body. They produce hormones like erythropoietin, crucial for blood and red cell production. Kidneys also help with bone health, so kidneys are extremely important. What are signs of weak kidneys? In the early stages, there are usually no symptoms at all. You'll only discover it through a blood test called creatinine. With this test, depending on the value, we can assess kidney function. A simple urine test can also help, showing if there's blood in the urine. Even before visible blood, protein in urine may indicate kidney damage. These two tests give doctors an idea of how the kidneys are working. They're routine screening tests used for large groups of people. In specific cases, doctors might order imaging, like a urinary tract ultrasound. But understanding these two tests is already a good start. So what are the signs of kidney disease? Now that you know, early stages have few symptoms. As kidney disease progresses, you may experience swelling and itching as toxins can build up in your body. Often, the kidneys can't eliminate these toxins effectively. You might also lose appetite and develop anemia, leading to paleness. Another sign of weak kidneys is changes in urine like foaminess or color changes. You've seen that a tiny bit of blood or hemoglobin isn't visible at first, but as it progresses, it can become noticeable. Protein in urine is another indicator. Small amounts won't cause foaming. But foamy urine can be a sign of kidney disease. Changes in urine quantity can also occur, though not always. It might increase or sometimes decrease. So watch for changes in your urinary patterns. If you haven't started any new habits to explain this and you notice these changes, it's a warning sign. What are the eight habits that can harm your kidneys? The last two are the main causes of kidney disease. But this one I'll mention also plays a key role in harming kidneys. Well, number one is excessive vitamin D. It's trendy now, sadly, to take high doses of vitamin D. If you get too much vitamin D, what's considered excessive? Levels above 100. Some sources put this risk at levels above 80. So values over 80 or 100 can lead to hypercalcemia. What does vitamin D do? It helps absorb calcium from food or supplements more efficiently. High vitamin D can cause excess calcium absorption leading to hypercalcemia. This can cause kidney stones. Recurring kidney stones can seriously impair your kidney function. Be cautious. Don't just take vitamin D. As an endocrinologist, I deal with bone and vitamin D issues. I often see test results showing excess vitamin D, meaning toxicity, which easily leads to symptoms. Remember, vitamin D doesn't just harm kidneys. It can cause heart arrhythmias too. It's very risky. So only take vitamin D with a doctor's recommendation. Enlarged kidneys can also be harmful. Number two, excessive salt and sodium consumption. Notice I said excessive? Like vitamin D, salt and sodium can be beneficial for our bodies. But what's the World Health Organization's recommended dose? Up to five grams of salt and two grams of sodium. What's the average intake in the US, Portugal, Spain, or even Brazil? More than 10 grams of salt. In some places, over 11 grams. That's more than double the recommended amount. Consuming this much regularly can harm your kidneys, like raising blood pressure. You've seen how kidneys manage water and sodium. Daily high sodium intake can impair kidney function. One-time excess is fine. Kidneys can handle it. That's why some say sodium doesn't harm kidneys. This is partly true, but consistent high intake can cause damage. One slip up at a party won't cause issues. Number three is about a fruit called starfruit. Starfruit itself doesn't affect kidney function in healthy people. But for those with existing issues, which you might not know about, Remember, early kidney problems often have no specific symptoms, so it's best to avoid star fruit. If you have kidney problems, don't even think about eating it. Now, what about other fruits like lemon, citrus, or pineapple? No.
Citrus fruits don't harm the kidneys, okay? So don't worry about that. Now that we've cleared up citrus fruits, let's talk about coffee. Do you think coffee harms the kidneys? Have you heard that? Well, generally it doesn't. At normal doses, three, four cups of drip coffee or espresso shots won't harm your kidneys. Why did I say as a rule? Some conditions like polycystic kidneys or caffeine sensitivity can affect blood pressure. In these cases, your doctor might advise moderating coffee intake. Number four. Anti-inflammatory meds can interfere with kidney function. This can cause damage. You might think this only happens after years of use. That's where you'd be wrong. Studies show filtration changes can occur in just five days or more. It's not about years of chronic use. Be cautious when taking any medication without a doctor's advice. These anti-inflammatories aren't harmful in small doses. Taking one when you have a cold won't affect your kidneys. It's chronic use, defined as five or more days, that can be problematic. There are also steroidal anti-inflammatories like prednisone, hydrocortisone, and dexamethasone. These drugs have medical uses, but without proper guidance, they can raise blood sugar, potentially harming your kidneys. So be cautious with medications. Only use them if prescribed by a doctor and when necessary. I'm not against the medicines I've mentioned here. I prescribe them too. If a doctor recommends them, don't worry. I'm just warning about using them without prescriptions. I see this happening quite often in practice. Number five, being afraid to eat protein. A few decades ago, even doctors claimed that if you had kidney issues, excess protein could harm or alter your kidney function. I'm sure that you've heard this before, as it's widely discussed. But when we started to analyze and observe, we found that people who avoided proteins and followed low protein diets actually experienced more kidney problems and had worse overall health. The American Diabetes Association suggests average protein intake of 0.8 g per kilogram of body weight. People consuming much less than that amount can experience negative effects. If you enjoy eating eggs or meat, that's fine. If you have kidney issues, avoid excess protein, as mentioned before. You're seeing that many things end up being a middle ground. Don't completely avoid or overindulge like with vitamin D or meat. Now that I've debunked the protein myth, let's discuss sparkling water. Does sparkling water harm the kidneys? The answer is no. If you enjoy sparkling water, drink it freely. It won't harm your kidneys. Now does garlic harm the kidneys? No, it doesn't. Good news, those viral videos claiming garlic harms kidneys, they're false. I love garlic and eat it daily. Would I eat it if it was harmful? That's proof it's actually fine. Now let's move on to number six. This increases kidney issues, smoking and alcohol consumption. Smoking, absolutely zero. Cigarettes, e-cigs, cigars, all raise kidney cancer risk. Now, about alcohol consumption. For kidneys, men limit to two drinks daily, women one. With liver issues from alcohol, then it's zero alcohol, okay? But here I'm specifically talking about kidneys and it's crucial to limit your alcohol intake. Moving on to common causes, I mentioned the two most frequent ones, which vary depending on your region. In some countries, the number one cause is high blood pressure. But why can high blood pressure damage the kidneys? So, managing blood pressure is vital for kidney health. Take regular readings, like once a week, always outside the doctor's office, okay? Because at the doctor's, we have what's called white coat hypertension. Many people laugh when I say this, but it really happens. If this applies to you, Feel free to mention it in the comments. It's when someone only has high blood pressure at the doctor's office. But the opposite exists too, called masked hypertension. That's when someone has high BP outside the office, but it's normal during checkups. So take measurements outside the doctor's office. Do it at home once a week. If readings are good, your doctor might suggest monthly checks, but I always recommend weekly to get an average as it's crucial to monitor. Why can high blood pressure harm the kidneys? High pressure levels can damage the kidneys internally. Over time, this may cause them to lose function. It's one of the main causes, and in some places, the leading cause of kidney failure. I'll give you tips later on how to lower your blood pressure. But number eight on our list is diabetes. High blood sugar levels can damage your kidneys. It's also a very common cause of kidney failure. Notice I mentioned both high blood pressure and diabetes. I've made videos explaining each of these conditions. For better diabetes control, check out this video I suggest. And for blood pressure control, I discuss it in this video. I recommend you watch both videos. Start with the diabetes one, then watch the blood pressure video. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from. Take care and see you next time.